In this video, we're going to be turning the all-new MSI Claw 8 AI Plus into a full-fledged gaming desktop PC using an eGPU over Thunderbolt 4. Now with the new Claw 8 AI, we do have more power on the CPU side, more power on the GPU, bigger screen, bigger battery. And overall, I've been having a really good time with this device like it sits in handheld mode. But when you get home, you might want a little more out of your device. And with this, we do get two Thunderbolt 4 ports that run at a 40 gig protocol. So in this video, we're going to be upping the GPU performance of the new MSI Claw 8 by quite a bit. Because what I've got here is actually the 1X GPU 2. This is a Radeon RX 7800M with 12 gigs of VRAM and it will run close to a 200 watt TGP in turbo mode. This supports Oculink and USB 4, so we're going to be connecting it here to Thunderbolt 4 on the Claw 8 AI+. And in just a second, I will connect this to my game capture so we can get a better look at everything, but I wanted to show you some gameplay here because it really does up that performance. This is God of War Ragnarok. Ultra settings, 1440p, with a little bit of FSR, given that we are connected over a Thunderbolt 4 connection. But you can see that we're over 100 FPS. It's a really playable experience. And by the way, I'm using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. And of course, there's several different eGPUs that you can connect to something like this. Originally, I was going to go with the new ARC B580, but unfortunately, I just can't get those ARC cards working over Thunderbolt properly. Uh, they're working at basically half performance. And, you know, we will get a degradation over USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 here with an eGPU. But with this RX 7800M, we're seeing some amazing 1440p performance paired up with the Claw AI8+. Okay, so now that I've got the eGPU connected, just want to give you a look at a few things here. You can see we've got that Ultra 7 258V, uh, 32 gigs of DDR5 at 8,533. We've still got access to the ARC 140V graphics, but instead of using that, since we're connected to the eGPU and an external monitor, we've got the Radeon RX 7800M, and you can use basically any Thunderbolt GPU if you wanted to. But this is an all-in-one unit here, and personally, I do think it offers some really great performance. Before we get into the benchmarks and testing, there's one other thing I wanted to show you here. With this eGPU from 1X Player, you can see right up here we've got our GPU power. Just run for mark to give you a look. It's got the turbo button, so as soon as I enable that, it's going to give us a nice TGP boost. So total graphics power can be up to close to 200 watts with the 7800M connected and turbo enabled. And that's how I'm going to be running it. But keep in mind, even though we can run this at up to close to 200 watts, we're still probably not going to hit that given that we're connected over Thunderbolt 4 here. But this is really going to up the GPU performance and allow us to game at 1440 on the MSI Claw 8 AI+. Next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks, and we're just going to face this off against the built-in Intel Arc 140 VI GPU, because after all, if you pick one of these up out of the box, that's what you're going to be playing on. I wanted to show you what kind of a performance gain we can get with this eGPU here. The 3D Mark Night Raid with the RX 7800M connected over Thunderbolt 4, we got a total score of 56,344. And just to give you an idea, on the built-in iGPU, this scored a 38,669, which isn't bad. I mean, it's definitely not a slouch on the iGPU, but obviously we got a nice boost here, and I figured we would. Next up, we've got Firestrike with the eGPU, 22,429, and without, 9,307. And the final one we have here is Time Spy, coming in with a really impressive score of 13,514 with the eGPU. And just on the iGPU, this scored a 4,600, which is one of the best scores out of an iGPU that we saw in 2024 so far. But these are synthetic benchmarks, and now it's time to move over to some real-world gaming to see how this eGPU really performs on the Claw 8. First up, we've got Black Myth Wukong, and this is one that's kind of given me a few issues here and there with eGPUs. Even over Oculink, I've noticed a degradation in performance. 
The main thing to keep in mind when using the eGPU with this game is frame gen is really going to help out no matter what you're using. It could be an Nvidia card, it can be an AMD card. And the way I ran it here was 1440p, very high, FSR, 70% resolution scale, frame gen on, and we only averaged a 67 FPS. And you can see that our absolute lowest was 59. Now at high settings, this is going to do a lot better than very high, but this is a harder one to run. So let's go ahead and move over to something else. Overwatch 2, 1440p, epic settings, no FSR, and I kind of expected this game to do a bit better. Now, I'm not complaining, but I figured we'd be way up there, given, you know, the specs that we've got here. But I have noticed, just testing this game out on the iGPU, is it really kind of struggles with this CPU only having 8 cores and 8 threads. It really does put a hurtin' on that Intel Core Ultra 258V. Doom Eternal, 1440p, Ultra Nightmare, no ray tracing, looking great here, over 100 FPS on average, and I, originally I went into this at just ultra settings because I wasn't sure how this would handle it with the uh, bandwidth being limited by that Thunderbolt 4 port. Uh, at ultra, we're seeing averages of around 132 FPS, but we can go to Ultra Nightmare and still play this all day long. I mean, it was a really smooth experience like it is. Forza Horizon 5, 1440p, extreme settings. To tell you the truth, I would probably just back this down to ultra because it is utilizing ray tracing right now. We're getting an average of around 78 FPS and it never dipped under 60. Still really playable like this, but just taking it down to ultra, disabling ray tracing here with this Thunderbolt 4 eGPU does bring us up past that 120 mark. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077, where at ultra settings, 1440p with FSR set to quality. It defaults right there at quality with this setup, and I just kind of wanted to run it like this to show you what it would do, but we can get a lot more out of this. With it like this, no frame gen, you know, just FSR right there at quality, I do see it dip under at 60 FPS every once in a while. Now there's a couple ways we could go about fixing this. Obviously, we could drop those settings down just a bit to high. We could enable a little more FSR, or we could enable frame gen, or even use fluid motion frames if you want to. But if the game has frame generation built in, that's usually what I go to. And CD Projekt Red did add FSR 3 and AMD's frame generation here. So we're at Ultra, 1440p, FSR 3 set to quality, frame gen enabled. Now we're getting over 100 FPS on average, and this really does make a difference, especially with these lower bandwidth eGPUs. I've done a lot of testing with eGPUs on handhelds, and some of the earlier handhelds that supported USB 4 only ran USB 4 at 20 gig instead of 40. And even on something like that, with let's say an NVIDIA RTX 4060, using NVIDIA's frame gen on a game like this takes it from not playable at all, around 38 FPS, up past 70 FPS. And in my opinion, it's well worth enabling this, especially with an eGPU, because it's just going to net you much better performance. Using an eGPU like this with the new MSI Claw 8 AI Plus does work out really well. And again, I originally wanted to go with an ARC eGPU. I've got a bunch of different docs that I tried, and I just really have never been able to get ARC cards working over Thunderbolt properly. And going with something like an RTX 4080 or 4090 would definitely be an easy way out. I just personally like these all-in-one eGPUs. And something like the RX 7800M offers more than enough performance for my needs because most of the time I will be using this as a handheld, 
but there are those days when I get home or I'm just at the house in general, I want a little more out of it, and I can just dock it with a larger screen. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I had a lot of people asking about this, so I figured I'd go ahead and make a quick video. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the new MSI Claw 8 AI+, Plus, just let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.